What is biotechnology? Essentially, it's about developing innovative drugs and treatments to combat major diseases like cancer to genetic disorders. As for drugs though, what does it take? What's the likelihood of successfully developing one? Let's break it down. Today, I've come to see Dr. Ning Xiao, a scientist working on medicinal chemistry. Here is what we make, uh, actually make a lot of compounds and molecules for the clients. A lot of those projects are actually drug discovery projects. They were trying to discover new drugs. In order to discover new drugs, Dr. Xiao's company, Bioduro, carries out extensive research on initial scientific ideas for new drugs. The ideas are usually from clients like university institutions or even pharmaceutical companies. But how is the research done? The lab is pretty simple. Uh, we actually get the, uh, we get the idea from the client. They ask us to make compounds for them. For example, you know, a very simple compounds, right? Or with different structures. According to Dr. Xiao, he tries to combine different atoms through chemical reactions. If it's successful, a new molecule or a compound emerges. Water is a major example of a successful compound, which is made up of two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom. So this could lead to the discovery of new drugs, but it's not as straightforward as it sounds. So we help them to make those kinds of compounds for them to test in the biological study and then they will find out whether it's a good molecule or a bad molecule, they will move on with that after rounds, rounds of research. So we're trying to help them to discover a drug. But what about designing molecules to target a specific disease? Sure, there, there's recently a project called FGFR4, right? FGFR4, this is a liver cancer target. So liver cancer is quite prevalent in China, isn't it? I mean, it's yeah. one of the... That's right. There is definitely demand medicine. for new medicine. So, so this molecule has been phase two trial right now. Okay. Yeah, but there's a client coming to us trying to uh, see whether we can find a next generation or a better molecule than the current compound. How long did it take from you, from the original idea to the animal For this one, it stage? takes about two years. two years. Meanwhile, a project like this requires a team of scientists from different fields like biology and DMPK among others. DMPK is a scientific discipline associated with safety evaluation in drug development. But for Dr. Ning Xiao, what's the most important aspect of his work? The most important aspect of our work is really to, to speed up the drug discovery process, to bring the cost down. To, to deliver a new drug to the market, it costs about $2 billion. That's why this idea is created, because you know, suppose you can ship some of the service or research uh, work to some lower cost country like China and India. Research might have moved to China or in India, but what else is fueling China's biotech boom? So one of the reasons that the Chinese biotech and the pharma industry is booming because a lot of people are actually coming back from the US. And these uh, are Chinese scientists. These are, these are Chinese scientists and also include some Westerners. Mm -hmm. And they help build up the capabilities mm -hmm. since, uh, I think, year 2000. That's oh. So when did, you, when did you come back yourself? I came back in 2014, yeah. After we spent uh, uh, 10 years in China, it's, uh, it's a newly developed industry. The area is pretty hot and, uh, and so you have more opportunities for sure. Dr. Ning Xiao is one of the Chinese born and bred scientists who've studied and worked overseas before returning home. He's one of the estimated 250,000 highways who are now working in China's life sciences industry. According to Beijing's 13th five-year plan, mandated biotech industry should exceed 4% of GDP by 2020. But as biotech is considered critical to tackle the looming challenges facing China's healthcare system, is success guaranteed in developing innovative drugs? True, actually a lot of people maybe spend their whole career not discovering a drug. And uh, and that's an industry problem and people are trying to solve that, right? That's why you see all kinds of uh, uh, strategies they were achieving, for example, outsourcing, for example, collaboration. So do you think you will develop a new drug in the near future? Hopefully. <laughs> Hopefully. How positive are you? Let's How say uh, one, <laughs> zero to 100%. You know what, it's very, 
it's very difficult. It's very difficult to predict because even you have a company in the clinic. Because once in the clinic, a lot of things can happen, and that's really out of your control. But I think people are getting better, so I think the success ratio should be higher. The scale of the challenge facing the sciences is huge, but scientists coming from different fields has meant that they can keep innovating even though success is not guaranteed. I'm Josh, stay tuned with China Matters.